back now at 808, kicking off a special series, Why Are We So Obsessed With? And we begin with our obsession with weight. Americans spend more than $40 billion each year on diet-related foods and products, and that begs the question, have we become overly obsessed with achieving the perfect body? 167! Yeah! From weight loss reality TV shows, books, and the big movie screen. It's called the South Beach Fat Flush, and all you drink is cranberry juice for 72 hours. Our obsession with achieving a trimmer, fitter body is everywhere. From the ads that we're exposed to, to the magazines that we read, to the way women are portrayed in music videos or um, dolls, there's just this extra, extra level of pressure on women to look a certain way. I gained five pounds. Five pounds, it might as well be 50. In my gym, I see women basically lining up at the scale to hop on and see what their number is. There's just something about that number that you can hold on to and you can use it as a marker. Am I going to be happy today? Am I going to be sad today? At Curves and Crunch Gym, women feel the pressure to have the perfect physique. When I look at those magazines and I see the perfect body, it kind of motivates me to try to get almost about 10 meters like how they are. It's embedded in the culture. There's an ideal way to look, and if we don't look like that, we've somehow failed in some way. Hey, Miss Red Carpet. Even celebrities struggle with their size. It's all this maintenance thing that I'm not used to. Right. I've never kept the weight off this long. Eat fit, now bend the knees, don't sit. And America's obsession with weight is nothing new. Up, together, up. I go through to keep my figure. Fad diets and exercise gimmicks date back as far as 150 years ago. Even your grandparents appreciated a good obesity soap or laxative beans. Bust it. But the thin look hasn't always been in. The ideal body shape has shifted throughout the generations. From Greta Garbo to Rita Hayworth, Marilyn Monroe, Twiggy, Farrah Fawcett, Jane Fonda. And the in shape now I think there's a much broader spectrum of body ideals, especially in Hollywood. You have the curvy Kim Kardashian, you have the more athletic Cameron Diaz. Do your crutches like this. So is it time to stop obsessing about the number on the scale? I think the message that's being sent is, you will be happy if you look like these women. When in reality, the only thing that can actually fulfill us is being confident and happy with ourselves and how we're living our lives. Emmy is a full-figured supermodel and founder of EmmyNation.com. Lisa Lillian is the star of the TV show Hungry Girl on the Cooking Channel and founder of HungryGirl.com. Good morning to both Good of you. Good morning. Emmy, let me start with you. You travel all over the world talking to young women about body image. Why is it no matter what background <laughs> we're from, we seem to be fixated, so many of us, on the scale? It seems like everywhere you go, especially in America, and we produce a lot of uh, product to go out to the world, with one image. Over and over and over again, it's a prepubescent, very unattainable image to try and get a hold of. But we know that, so why yes. do we continue to fixate on it? Why do we want it so much? Well, it's, 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 it's a catch-22. What you see is what you try and aspire to. I think what we need to do to change that is to use your voice and say, well, the, the, you know, these images really don't make me feel good, or there's not enough images that I can relate to. We can't sit back apathetically and let it all happen. We, it, the, 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 the products are going to keep on coming with this imagery because we're not saying anything. So you have to use your voice. They'll Lisa, listen. The, the people will totally listen. Well, Lisa, you grew up with uh, your mom had weight issues. She was always dieting. You were a yo-yo dieter at one point in your life. Do you think you inherited in some way your mother's views and sort of put them on yourself? You know, my mom did go up and down and tried every fad diet, and so I grew up thinking that fad diets worked and that you can be on a diet or off a diet, and that's just not the case. I mean, it, there's no <laughs> magic bullet. You have to change your lifestyle, change the way you eat forever, but it is definitely partially learned behavior, and you grow up that way. I mean, to some degree, I'm happy that I did learn that because now I'm more aware of it and I know what I should be eating and I, I you know, I, I understand it better. Absolutely. Yeah. And yet, we saw in this piece, through the, through the ages, really, the decades, our definition of what looks good has changed. Do you think we're, we're more accepting now of full-figured women? I, I do, personally. I, I think so. I definitely think we are. Um, it, it's, 
the aperture has to open to not just include, oh, the, the, the look, the color, the flavor of the month is curvy. It should be the, the beautiful women who are more prone to be thin, or the women who are more prone to be more athletic looking and a little bit more curvy. Not just one for the year or two years, and then because there's many, many flowers out there, not and just one tulip. Everybody's <laughs> body is different. You can't look at someone on television and say, I want that body. It, it can't, can't happen. I mean, you can't. I'm five foot one. I'm never going to be <laughs> tall and leggy. It will never happen. We took pictures <laughs> together. We're totally, there's no way that I, the three of us could ever, <laughs> look, ever look the same, nor should we. Right. And what I find interesting, too, is that uh, you see more and more men obsessing. Unfortunately, about yes. Well, men are yeah, they're I'm becoming uh, more obsessed with the way they look as well. We're a very superficial society. I don't know that that's going to change, truthfully. A lot of money being made in the diet-related industries, and once again, we just have to be aware and use our voice when appropriate. Amy, thank you so much. Lisa Lillian, thank you. Thank you.